Welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. As you know, if you've been watching the channel, we're sailing around Lake Ontario, and we're gonna make our second stop in Toronto on the way back, one of our favorite cities. And we kept wondering why we could anchor in this beautiful spot with this great view of the skyline and why nobody else was anchoring there. Well, we figured out why. When we went to raise our anchor, which was on all chain, it wouldn't come up. It was stuck on debris on the bottom. And not only did we get it stuck once, we got it stuck twice. This episode's not gonna be about the beauty of Toronto, it's gonna be what do you do when you can't get your anchor up, you're all chain, you can't cut it, and you're gonna be stuck in Toronto forever if you can't figure it out. So stay tuned. We anchor and hoist the sail. Okay, we've had a leisurely beam reach sail across Lake Ontario, and we're now pulling back into our favorite city, Toronto's Harbor. This, this city has a lot going on. There's so many places to anchor. So many beaches, if that's what you're into. Of course, tons of restaurants, tons of shopping. So we plan to come here for a couple of days before we start heading back east along the North Shore of Lake Ontario, checking out some of those cities we kind of flew by. But uh, yeah, we uh, definitely say of the, all the cities, this is our favorite. And it's nothing like a comfortable beam reach sail to get here to make it super relaxing. The Toronto skyline at night. This is from one of our favorite anchorages, isn't it, Janice? Yep, it's our own little secret place that isn't marked on the map. <laughs> we'll show it we'll to you. Plop an anchor here. Yeah. And no one told us anything about it, so stay. Beautiful. Here's Janice. We're sitting on our boat. You can hear the crazy seabirds at night. Those lights are annoyingly bright and they are from like kind of like the industrial area and then these are the beautiful city lights probably a little overexposed let me bring down the exposure just a bit there we go and that is what we see from our boat this is the beautiful view you wake up to when you stay at the cottage anchorage and the reason we call it the Cottage Anchorage is... I'm not sure what we would call it otherwise. It doesn't have a name. It's not officially an anchorage. There's a lot of little, little cottages on this part of uh, the Toronto Island cluster. There's a little public beach right there. And uh, mostly cottages. The occasional housey looking thing. But you get a great view of the nighttime sky and also in the morning and the industrial. You can hear all the beep, beep, beep. It's unfortunate, but that's uh, just part and parcel. Okay, we were talking about anchorages in Toronto and we'd already been here a few days and off and on and we thought this was definitely the best anchorage because you get the great view of the city and yet you're off the beaten path. You're behind a kind of a breakwater over there and you know you're kind of in front of a public little tiny beach and some cottages perfect spot right well i mean this could happen anywhere i can't really blame this on this particular anchorage but uh, we can't get our anchor up now it was clear a second ago i don't know if i can show you now it's kind of murky now uh our anchor is straight down to what we think is an old mooring ball uh, like a cement anchor with like chains and stuff on it our chain is now stuck on that. You can sort of see our anchor. We've been motoring around trying to loosen it, and I think we flipped our anchor on its side. Um, but the chain is stuck on whatever this is. We've been at it for about half an hour now. It doesn't, we don't know which direction we should be wrapping or unwrapping ourselves, so we don't know which way to motor. But uh, yeah, we got to get it up. So Janice is going to don the old snorkel flippers and try and go down and see what it's hooked on and what direction we need to wind our chain to get it off whatever the heck this thing is. You say, we're not in very much water. We're in like, I don't know, 10 feet of water, 11 feet of water. So uh, with flippers, she should be able to get down there, but she doesn't have the greatest lung capacity for diving. So I got a funny feeling she won't do it or won't be able to do it and I'll have to get in. My only concern is if I'm in the water, she's not as, uh, good at motoring and if we start drifting away over here we're going to be into the shallows and I'll be off the boat so 
Let's hope I don't have to do that. Okay, Janice is in the water. She's gonna go over top of it with the goggles and just see what we can see. Okay, take a look at what you see. I don't know if I can do this. Okay, the next scene you're gonna see on this camera is uh, me in the water, because I'm gonna mount it to the bow bar and uh, get in with a GoPro and see if we can figure this out. Wish me luck. Do you want me to lift it off the ground a little? You can try. Not lifting anymore. Okay. Do you see anything that better? A little bit. Okay, our anchor is stuck in a pinched piece of steel. Yeah. I don't know if I could get that out though. Want wow. me to get a super long rope for the anchor thingy? I think we might have to lift it to the surface. Can Let me just try again. Maybe if I give you tons of slack? Yeah, but then I'll have to, okay. I'll have to float. I can't use the uh, chain to pull me down there. Oh, I hear. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. He's going down. Oh, he's back. Okay, I see what it is. What? You need to release the slack. Okay. A lot. A lot, a lot. Oh. And then I'll, uh, I'll try and unwrap it. Okay. Here comes a lot of slack. Okay, what I might need you to do, that might be a timing thing. I think for me to be able to have enough slack without the boat pulling on it, you might have to motor forward just a smidge. Okay, Get did you want to stuff the anchor in properly or no? Okay. It's up to you. Yeah. If you can see it, do you see it now? Uh-huh. So the anchor is flopped on its side now because we went over it with a chain, I guess, and un undug it. So we need to redig it. When he unhooks our mooring, we at least are anchored. Because it's windy now. We'll just hope it it's redigs itself. That, it's a fair bit of work to get down there. Yeah. But I see what it is. The chain is wrapped around a metal shackle type of thing. Okay. So I have to try and the problem is, is you get tired getting down there. Yeah. Oh. We take a break and try and do it in a bit. No, I'm okay. I just need to I'll hold the chain until I rest. It's easier to pull myself down than it is to... I know. Are there waves or something? Or is it just normal? They're hitting the shore now. The waves that just hit us. You just feel the chain bouncing. Well, yeah, it is a little wavy, but it's windy now. Okay, so the plan is I get to the bottom. Yeah. You let out a bit. I'm to chain hit ready so I can drop it quickly. got it free. No way. So let out some chains so we can drag the anchor. Exciting. Excitement. The chain has to start moving yet. Yeah? The anchor is over there, like very clear to see. Is it stuck on that object again? I hope not. Okay, hold the chain in then. Okay, I know sooner got our chain unhooked from that metal contraption. We go to pull the anchor up and now we're stuck on I don't know, a, a, a mooring ball line? I'll show it to you. I don't know how it got around our anchor because it looks like a small loop. It looks like a small loop, but that means it went all around our anchor so, uh, and got tied to the neck. Uh, it doesn't, I still don't understand how it got caught around our, our anchor. Okay, we have some more bad news, as if we haven't had enough bad news today with this stupid anchor. Um, it's not a rope. Because at first I thought if we got it close enough to the surface, I could just get in the water with a knife and just hack away at that mooring ball line until it was cut and then we'd have our 
anchor free. Unfortunately, we got it close to the water at one point and we found out it's actually a chain wrapped around the neck of my the neck of my anchor. And so we won't be able to cut it. It's a chain. Okay. So that boring ball base we had before has a big loop of chain. So what we're gonna have to do is lower our anchor to the floor enough that I can grab the ring at the back and pull it out of the chain. What are the chances that we would get caught with our chain through a base of a mooring ball and then as we get that loose our anchor hooks a loop of chain on the same mooring ball. That is insane the chances of that. But this was our favorite anchorage until this and this has been a bit of a catastrophe so now we're like well how many other mooring balls are in this field that we might be hooking onto at some point so I think we're gonna have to downgrade this uh, anchorage for now. Now granted we could have maybe anchored closer to shore and been in like eight or nine feet of water instead of 15 feet of water and that would have been a lot easier to see and a lot easier to work on. I'm gonna have to get back in the water and the only way this is gonna work now this is worse than the last problem because the last problem at least the part that was wrapped around the mooring ball base was just the other side of the chain was loose so I could always have tried to use the loose side of the chain to undo it it ended up I used the side that was on the boat just because there was enough slack at that moment I could get it around um, now there's no slack because the anchor is pulling on a chain so there's just constant tension on either the anchor chain my anchor chain or the mooring ball anchor chain so the only thing I can think of is uh, Janice I get I go pull myself down Janice lets out a little bit of the anchor road and then motors forward a bit, a bit, which is a bit dangerous with me being underwater. Uh, so she'd have to motor forward like five, 10 feet, just enough to get slack. Hopefully then I can take the anchor chain from the mooring line and find a way to unloop it around my anchor. None of this is fun, not having a good day at all. But uh, we don't really have a choice. We're gonna be stuck here in Toronto forever if we don't get this undone. We don't even have bolt cutters on our boat in order to cut our own chain if for whatever reason we were really stuck we cut our own chain and uh, tie a rope to our anchor and hope to retrieve it. You know, throw a fender or something on it and hope to retrieve it. Uh, we did have that. With a later. Yeah, we did have a. I don't know what they, we did have chain really well. bolt cutters at some point on this boat, and I had it in the lazarette, and we looked, and it's not there. So I don't know what happened to it. Whether maybe at some point somebody got on our boat and stole it, or what the heck happened. Anyways, we don't have any way to cut our chain. In case you were wondering if that was an option. Okay, we've had some time. We're about to have lunch just to kill some time because. We had to mull over some ideas. So here was idea that I had while in the water, but we now realize that's not gonna work. This is our spinnaker halyard. I was thinking of tying it to the mantis anchor. So it's got one of those loops at the back. And I was gonna tie the spinnaker halyard to the loop, thinking that we could pull the anchor from the loop side and that would unhook the chain. But no, it won't because the chain is actually around the neck of the anchor. So if I tie a spinnaker halyard, to the loop, the chain would be stuck in between our chain on our anchor and the loop uh, and the spinnaker halyard. It wouldn't have a way of getting off either way. So that doesn't work. Um, the way that does work is if you're willing to sacrifice your chain or if you have road. For once, I've always been so happy we have chain on our anchor, not rope or road. Um, but with rope, you could just cut your own rope real easy and just and, and tie a spinnaker halyard to the loop on your anchor. You won't lose your anchor, you'd lose, you'd cut your own rope, so you'd have to re, re-splice it onto your anchor, but that's a problem for a later time. But I don't have the ability to cut my own chain. I don't have a hacksaw and I don't have bolt cutters, big ones to go through a chain. And the chain that's wrapped around my anchor looks to be even thicker gauge than my own, an uh, my own chain, so you would re need a huge set of bolt cutters to get through that. But if we did have bolt cutters for our own chain, what we would do is tie the spinnaker halyard around the loop, cut my own chain, pick my anchor up from the loop, which should be fine, the, the chain should fall off if the if the neck of my own anchor was now not, ta not attached to anything. Um, but I don't have that ability, so that's off the table. Um, so, I've come up with a new idea. So we have a backup anchor a Danforth it's in case you need to while well, in the Caribbean sometimes people will tie their bow 
and then tie their uh, stern with a different anchor so that the boat doesn't swing. If you're in a really congested anchorage, that stops you from swinging. We've never used our backup Danforth anchor. It's in our lazarette, but I just thought of this. So what we do is we drop our anchor back down. We'd know where the boat is pointing into the wind. I would then go out in my dinghy, with my second anchor, way out there, because I won't be able to back down on it to make sure it sets, drop it, bring the dinghy back to the boat, tie that line for that backup anchor through my bow, take the chain off this windlass, and put my rope that's on my backup anchor on this side of the windlass and use it to pull us forward using the, the backup anchor and take the stress off of my chain. So the next step is for me to jump in the water and pull myself down with my chain to the bottom find where the other chain's hooked around it, try and unhook it all while holding my breath. I hate doing this stuff. But we gotta do it or we're gonna be here in Toronto forever. So, wish me luck. This better work. We're out of ideas. The pink noodle is the sexiest part. <laughs> sexy, sexy. Whew, I can't see much down there. You can't? The anchor's just sort of flopping around, but it was hard to see the chain. Now, earlier we could see the bottom and now it's murky and we can't see shit. I don't know. <sighs> okay, the chain's still around it. It's hard to see. Yeah, I think it was clear before. Now it's not. Yeah, it's hard to see. I can feel the chain around it, but I'm not 100% sure which direction I'm supposed to be pulling it or... Uh, uh. Okay, I grabbed the anchor. It's, 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 I know how it's oriented. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna have to reach around for the, the chain that's around it. Just try and figure it out. <sighs> okay, some progress, I think. Yay. It's a muddy, sloppy bottom though. Oh. So as soon as I get down there and I start kneeling in it, it all starts clouding up. Silt, yeah. But the chain around it's now, Looser? Loose. For all I know, the anchor might actually come up. I'm just not sure. Mm -hmm. We don't want to re-catch it again. No. So. Okay, the anchor's a lot heavier than I thought it was. Our anchor? I tried to lift the anchor just to see, like, around the chain. But... Oh. Okay, after about five tries, finally got it off. We got to take the anchor up off the ground a bit, and I could see the chain and lift it over the anchor, and it's done. So now the only thing holding us here is the, the, the back of Danforth. These rubber gloves are a godsend because you're grabbing a bunch of metal in, in almost murky darkness. They are just uh, everyday gardening gloves. And they're rubber, but yeah, that way you're not worried about grabbing some sharp steel and cutting yourself in your water. Oh, so now we pull up the main mantis anchor, and then uh, the only thing I'm worried about now is did I drop the Danforth in too shallow water for our boat to make it, in which case we have to get in the dinghy to get our backup anchor out. We'll see. Jess is gonna hit the hit the windlass and we're gonna make sure that the anchor comes up. There it is! All the way to the surface. Done. Not even dirty. <laughs> no, it's not even dirty. So now we gotta okay. I guess, cleat the chain and wrap the rope around instead. Is that what you want? Yes. So just yeah, just Cleat that on the on the yeah on the cleat, and now we'll put the rope on the windlass. I should start the end. We didn't even film the Danforth coming up because there were some serious dark clouds coming our way, and with dark clouds comes heavy winds, and we didn't trust that that Danforth would uh, hold us against the shallows that were behind us. We got it up, we got to shore, everything was good. Okay, we got the anchor situation fixed. We had the two anchors. We took the uh, spare one off at the dock here. We're at the service dock here at the club. We we're gonna get some fuel, but we finally got rain. The first rain of our vacation, and it's lovely. Yes, it's weird to say we're looking forward to rain. Yeah, it's good. We'd already been rain swimming as yeah, I, you I know. just just swam and soaked my hat to the and then we start moving and it starts pouring rain. Yeah, awesome summer rainstorm. The good thing is, is our new Dodger Bimini is really working out. Nice and cozy. Now, obviously, if we were at anchor, it would point into the wind. Right now, we're tied to a wall, so it's kind of coming inside of us. But, so it would be even better if we were at anchor. But it's still not letting any water through. Dripping off the roof there, pretty good. But, uh, yeah. 
great day of overcoming obstacles. And we yeah. got our big bubbas. Uh, big bubbas of the rum. Kraken and Dr. Pepper. That's the good stuff. So we're happy. Stay safe. Stress free. Recovering. Recovering, Recovering from our stress. All right. Just thought I'd let you know we finally are actually having rain. Woo. Woo. So what did we learn from this fiasco? Well, it's if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. And as much as we loved anchoring here for the view of the Toronto skyline, we soon realized the reason it's not an anchorage is there's a lot of garbage on the bottom <laughs> and uh, you're taking your chances. Now, I did say something earlier in the video that if I wasn't sure, I should have anchored closer to shore where it was maybe eight or nine feet deep because then it would be quite easy to dive down and free your anchor from whatever it's stuck on as opposed to 15 feet down, which when you don't have dive weights to bring you to the bottom, was a bit challenging to get down there without being exhausted. So yeah, I know we learned something from this experience and hopefully by watching this, you may have learned something as well. If you enjoyed it, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes. In the future, we will continue with the Toronto excursion, show you a little bit of what we did on land and then we'll move on going east along the north shore of Lake Ontario. A special thanks to our patrons that support the channel. Without you, we probably couldn't keep doing this, and much love. Until next time, this is Craig and Janice signing off, wishing you safe cruising. We ain't all right, hoist the sails.